The pandemic pushed Christians and churches um, into some creative spaces that we never really dreamed of. And quite honestly, many of us were not prepared for it. But thank God the church is full of creative geniuses. And we learned that during this season. And I think what is great about it is that now post pandemic, we still get to use the resources that were really developed during the pandemic. And so I got a chance to sit down with some pretty amazing, dope creatives. Dinar Young, Prashia Hilliard, they sat down with me and joined me for a conversation about the creative Christian. And so, join us. So guys, welcome. I appreciate you guys being here, oh, Prashia, man. Dinar. I'm glad to have you. I, what's crazy is y'all were just talking before the camera started rolling about the fact that you've crossed paths Many times, so many in the same times. Room. but you had to come to New York to, huh. <laughs> to actually is, meet it. each other. Yeah. So I, I feel like job well done already. <laughs> like, <laughs> did my job. We We're can stop. Done here. We're done. Thanks, Thank guys, you, for everyone. watching. Appreciate and you. Scene. <laughs> but you two, like, literally are two of the most creative people um, that I've seen in a very long time. Oh, man. Wow. Um, That's a major statement. And I think the reason why I'm saying that is because. You know, there, there are people that are creative within a box, right? Like, this is, I'm creative in this specific area. Mm -hmm. But I think that you all, like, between singing and production and mm -hmm. all the things, like, mm -hmm. you guys literally do all of the things. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought that it would be an interesting conversation for us to really talk about what that is actually like, like, even how you got there. Like, when did, let me, let me start with this. When did you know that I'm just a, I'm a comma, as somebody I know would say. Like, I, like I'm mm. not just one thing, but like, there's a list of things that I'm capable of doing, mm. and I wanna do it all. Mm. When did you know that? Birth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. that might be you know, I mean, I don't know your background, Denar, but I'm a PK, and mm -hmm. I think every PK is at some point tasked with doing everything. Everything, yeah. <laughs> So I think it was kind of like, out of necessity, and out of kind of curiosity, you spend enough time at the church, my dad was on television like early nineties. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we were we were figuring it out. So mm -hmm. nobody I think had just done it. Yeah. Watching him chart those territories, I think it's kinda like in my blood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. T V mm -hmm. production, all of that kind of stuff. But just being a PK, mm -hmm. having somebody gotta do it. Somebody <laughs> didn't show up, That's so the uh, part. guess yeah. who gonna do it? Yeah. yeah. Me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. About to make this quick graphic. Right. All right. We need to let the church know something is happening. Yeah. I guess I'm a graphic artist. You gotta figure it out. All right. So we gotta figure it out. All right. Yeah. All right. I mean, same. I'm not a PK, but I was I was raised and grew up in ministry, and so my family started uh, one of the mega churches back in South Carolina. So mm -hmm. literally. From birth up until now, I've been in some facet or form of ministry. And just like what she was saying, there's a need, but there are not enough hands yeah. ever. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always a need for designers, always a need for creatives, always a need in the church. But for some reason, that's one area that creatives are rarely found. Mm -hmm. And so just because of the need, I was forced, yeah, <laughs> you know, right, to right. fill a bunch of areas. But that's kind of how I discovered, like, maybe you might be able to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And, you know, that's kind of how it kind of happened out. Yeah, I think I think I have a similar testimony, but I, I think even now as a pastor, mm -hmm. I think people undervalue what the training and the skill oh, sure. set that is being developed as just as a result of your volunteerism at the church. Yeah. Right. Like, I think that there are people actually even in this room behind the cameras and stuff that they learn that while doing stuff mm -hmm. at the local church. Mm -hmm. And um, it's funny because I feel like people almost want to dismiss the local church now, um, but a lot of these things are kind of developed and honed while you're just serving um, and not mm -hmm. even know what you're doing. Like Facts. the church is the place, like I don't mean this in a like disrespectful way, but this church is the place where you don't have to have the skill. <laughs> like you just, you just have a willing heart. heart right? yeah. Like I'm just looking for a willing worker right. and whoever will, whosoever <laughs> will let them come. Like literally we will put somebody behind the camera they ain't never been right. behind the camera before right. and say it's your job now. Um, and I think that there's a value to that that I think is, um, I don't know, I don't know if we all get that and appreciate it like did you guys know mm. what you were getting mm. when you were getting it and did you actually appreciate it while you were getting it heck no <laughs> <laughs> heck no i would Not say 
decide. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hind hindsight's always twenty twenty. You're yeah. always able to look back and see and see like, okay, that's why I had to pick up a camera. Or that's why I had to learn this. And but when you're in it, it's like I don't want to do this. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. I don't like it. Right. No, I don't want to. No. <laughs> right. Definitely kicking and screaming. For sure. Definitely like, why am I having to write this report on Genesis? Like, and then yeah. here, we <laughs> right. here we come years later. Now right. I'm a preacher yeah. and a creative. And it's like, oh, okay, I see why you made me travel and sell merch on the road with you every summer. Right. Right. Yeah. Now I actually know what I'm doing when it comes mm -hmm. to customer service. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But then I thought it was punishment. Mm -hmm. Right, right. What makes, what's your definition of a creative? Everybody's using that word now. It's not a word that we yeah, probably used 10 years ago. It. Right? Uh, 10, 15 years ago, we weren't saying that. It was, creatives existed, but we weren't mm -hmm. saying that. What is your definition of a creative? Denar has it. That's a, uh, do He's I, do right I now. have a download? <laughs> I don't know. Jeez. My file is corrupted right now. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's not okay. It's not, it's not quite coming up. Terrible. Um, it's tough to define. Yeah. What is creative? Creatives exist in everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think, I think we innately embody creativity mm -hmm. because our God is a creator, mm -hmm. and so I think anyone who exists, He breathed that into us. He mm -hmm. breathed creativity into us. Uh, he told us to be fruitful, to to multiply. I think now it's trendy to be a creative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I think creatives are people who look at, who look with different eyes mm -hmm. um, at whatever the situation may be. That's my definition today. And I, I think, like how that means they ever ask me, ask me to come back. <laughs> I have it put packaged together. Yeah. With like, well, all of them will start with the same letter and everything. So I thought, but no, I no, no to add to yours though, to add to yours, I think that a lot of times we relegate creativity just to the arts. Right. And it's just like, as long as yeah. I paint, I'm a creative. As long as I sing, I'm a creative. But there are business people who are able to do strategy mm. and to put yeah. things together. Technically, mathematicians are creative. You know, yeah. everybody, like you said, to your point, is a creative because our God is. And so yeah. I think that term is very broad. But right now, it's just this term that we slap on anything. Yeah. Like, we literally, if somebody can, <laughs> you know go to the dollar store and get uh, a bag of flowers. And it's like, you know, I just made a creative. No, you're not. Everybody, yeah. everybody yeah. DIY. Yeah, they, they, they don't know how you did yeah. that. And that so I think there are levels to creatives, but everybody mm -hmm. at their core is a creative, if that makes any sense. It does make a lot of sense. Okay. So um, is there a difference between a creative and a Christian creative? And what, if so, what's the difference? I think, unfortunately, now there is, but I don't think there should be. Okay. Go yeah. further. I, I think that. that I feel like um, how how raw can I be right as now? Raw as you I just feel be. like church creative is very boring sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's very boring. It's very predictable. It's very cut and dry. It's like you look at one church's social media, you look at all of them. Right, you know, they're right, all right. the same. And I feel like um, sometimes as a Christian creative, you're placed into a box yeah. of mm. church understanding. Yeah. You know, which I don't believe should be there. Which is the antithesis of creativity. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, how exactly. can you call it creativity if it's all boxed in? It, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. What do you think? Other side, I yeah, mean, upside. I completely okay. agree with that. But I think the other side of it is, you know, I overheard, I might have overheard another episode okay. while I was waiting uh -huh. for my time to be called to the table. Uh -huh. What'd you get? Um, <laughs> well, you all were talking about Christian songs and Christian songwriting, and mm. I think it speaks to the intention. I think it speaks to the heart behind That's true. why you create, mm -hmm. but I totally get it. Mm -hmm. I am tired of seeing the same thing. You know, we, I think in Christian, well, I'll say this, in church, mm -hmm. we have this, like, unspoken envy jealousy thing that we do mm -hmm. and when we see somebody else have success with we it, gotta it we gotta do it yes. Yes. we gotta yes. do it and we gotta do it yeah. just like they did it and we gotta we gotta we gotta package it like this and we want somebody on the team that look like denard has got his hair highlighted <laughs> i mean think about it i mean the bible says you follow those who through faith and patience inherit the promise mm -hmm. and we imitate but it's, we don't create it's, it, it we don't yeah. create that's actually yeah. good I yeah. like him. See, he made this. <laughs> always yeah. making what yeah. I sound sound. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. That was good. That was yeah, good. Yeah, that's good. We imitate, but we don't create. So I think people struggle with the idea of limitations with creativity as it relates to Christians. And I think that an easy answer would be to take the limits off and throw all of the limits away. 
I instead would replace the word limits with boundaries. I think that any time that you are doing a work for anybody, if you're doing a work for a client, a client has boundaries. There's a, there's a border that the client says, hey, don't color outside of these lines because you're representing my brand. You're not just representing yourself. Well, in Christianity, as a Christian creative, there is a boss, there is a supervisor who says that these are the borders and these are the lines that you are to color in. That's not a limitation, it's a boundary. And so I think that when creatives pretend that there are no boundaries, I think we actually do ourselves a disservice because we don't actually, we cease to do the work of the Lord. Because the moment that we do it for Jesus, there are limitations, there are some boundaries, there are some borders, and we're designed to color in the lines. Here's the great news about it. The great news is that the palette is huge, um, that it's not a tight uh, palette that you're coloring in. Um, there's a vast palette that you get to color um, with. And so if we see it as just a limitation, I think it will hinder our performance. It's not a limitation, but there are some boundaries that we have to color within. And so, uh -huh. Is that is some of that because of the boundary mm. of Christianity, right? So to your point, I think there's a level of intention, right? Like that comes along with being a Christian creative. Does that become a boundary for people that makes it difficult for us to kind of cross over that line? Ooh, we. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm loaded. trying no, not don't to try. be tweeted right now. Yeah. <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> um, you don't want to be a meme. Yeah. I, don't want to be a meme. <laughs> I do not want to be the next topic of conversation. Um, I think I think boundaries are good. I think, mm -hmm. and this is not to go off it. I am not a psychologist or anything qualified to say, but I think people. It's like it's like creative. It's a, it's a new buzzword. Everybody wants to mm -hmm. talk about boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. But yeah. boundaries are are made so that you can protect yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think, or it gives you a marker as to how far you should go and mm -hmm. what you can mm -hmm. accept mm -hmm. into your life. And I think religion has created these rigid boundaries of what the gospel looks like. Mm -hmm. Um, but anytime Jesus talked about spreading the good news and spreading the gospel, if you go look at it. He says that word translates as publish, like the same word we use to put to be creative. Yeah, we, yeah. When you when you're in a creative program, it's gonna tell you, are you ready to export to publish? That's yeah. that same word. Mm -hmm. And so I think um, to bring myself all the way back around the mountain, I think unfortunately religion has created boundaries for creatives, and that's why we see so many. Christ loving creatives creating outside of the church. Let's talk did about that, it. You did good. Though. Don't tweet. Me. You did good. No, you <laughs> no, did, no, you're no, done no. good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I feel like sometimes, um, I mean, to your point, there are boundaries that the church places on creatives limited to their own level of understanding. I feel like we do a really bad job sometimes in the church of labeling everything we don't understand as demonic. Yeah. And it's just like, Talk about because it. I don't understand well, we've it. Never seen it we've never seen it. So yeah. it's just, it, God can't be there. And yeah. it's just like, a lot of times creativity is all about, like, I'm a rule breaker. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I love boundaries because I love to break them. Like, that's, that's just what I, <laughs> by, by nature, that's just who I am. Jeez, I don't know. It's just, about. That's just what I am. I love boundaries. <laughs> if you tell me no, <laughs> if you tell me no, I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. You know, that's just kind of, that's just how God made me. I, I don't know if God made me. Well, anyway, yeah. but still, I feel like a lot of times the church places these lines there, but creativity is always found on the outside of that. Yeah. And so we're always, yeah. we're stuck in imitating because we haven't crossed over the boundary to find out what's over here to create. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. What is your, because uh, I think with that, right, because again, I think some things are religious, okay. right, boundaries, and then there are some things that are like, oh no, that's just displeasing to God, for, right? For sure, mm -hmm. for sure. What, what are the methods or what are the things that you've put in place to kind of make sure that you don't go outside, that you don't color outside of the lines? 
What are the things that you've put in place? What's what's your gauge that's like, oh no, you went too slow. you went too far. That I time. wanna I just wanna say I have no gauge, it's the Holy Spirit. Yeah, well, in, that's, in and of no, myself that is the gauge. Yeah. in and of myself, yeah. I'm always gonna go too far. Yeah. I'm always gonna go I'm always <laughs> yeah. just that's just where my mind I get is. That. Yeah. Always going to. So I think that a lot of times in Christian creative spheres that you have to couple that creativity with Holy Spirit yeah. because he'll let you know, ah, come back in. Ah, yeah. This might be it might offend somebody a little bit too much. Even though mm -hmm. it might be right or cool, it might be offensive. And yeah. so your message is polluted then. And so. I love that. Mm -hmm. I think, totally agree with that. Holy Spirit is, first of all, he's, I call him my chief creative, my creativity Facts. on his mm -hmm. land. Facts. Mm -hmm. um, but he's always going to check you. And I think um, what what we lack, even in, even in how we minister to people and in the way that we share the gospel is, Love should lead it, mm. and if love is not leading it, really good. then it ain't God. Yeah. And so, you know, why am I doing this? Am I doing it to show the love of Christ? I mean, I, everything is not a heart with Jesus' name mm. on it, but right. Right. is it being driven by love? Yeah. Is it being driven by the right things? And I think Holy Spirit does a good job of showing us that, and I think accountability, That's having a circle that yeah. will, for sure, that has the permission from you to speak into your life because people are oh he in my circle like my pastor my pa that's my pastor and it's yeah. like well you haven't given that pastor permission to speak into mm, your life right you just out here so doing it whatever he don't know about thing, it right? yeah. Yeah. you're just using your pastor it, to right. sign off on whatever yeah. it is that you're yeah. doing but yeah. you have to give your that's circle good. the permission to speak into your life mm. i think that's i want to go with that because i think accountability and creativity it's like it could get weird sometimes, right? Because this is this is my baby, right? This is mm -hmm. something that's being birthed for mm -hmm. me, and I think creatives. Let's go keep going with that word for a look. Are can be sensitive. Oh, very <laughs> can be. I'm an artist, and I'm sensitive. <laughs> Hello, finish it, right? So, um, I think I think sometimes I think sometimes we can we can be so sensitive and mm. so uh, mothering or fathering about mm. what we're giving birth to that we've kind of blocked access mm. um, from other people to be able to speak into that. So I think, I, I guess I'm asking you guys, what makes you um, able to be accountable to another as far as it relates to your creativity? What is that thing in you that says, no, I can, I can let other people in to speak into what I'm giving birth to? Mm. Well, I'd say for me, it is understanding at the core that person has my back because I feel like a lot of times that pushback in creativity isn't because we think so highly of ourselves, it's fear. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's like, it's, it's like, well, I'm the only one that understands me, I'm the only one that gets it. And it's not even coming from like a pride thing, but a fear thing. And yeah. so I don't want you to silence my voice because I'm afraid if you silence me, I won't be heard. Mm -hmm. But understanding that that person who is your uh, covering or your checks and balances, whatever, they at the core, they have your back. Yeah. And I think that is, as a baseline is so important for me, mm -hmm. you know, because then I can take correction. Yeah. If I know that you're for me, I can take correction. Right. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think when you understand the difference between who I am mm. and what I create, oh, that's I think good. the I moment like that. that you, that you Mm -hmm. Equate what you create to who you are. You good. put yourself in a very, very awkward position. God is the only one that has the authority to do that. Yeah. Mm. Um, and so, I for me, it's like mm. my dad used to say it to me like this. He said, "I'm, I'm, I am a, I'm scrutinizing your behavior. I have to do it in his voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scrutinizing your behavior, not who yes. you are." And so, mm. or your performance, not over who your person is. And I would be like, uh, it, you said it it's was the ugly. Same thing. I am, right. I am yeah. in my feelings. Yeah. But understanding that separation, I'm not what I yep. create. Yep. I've created this. I'm going to give glory to God with whatever this is. And um, that's, that's the barometer for the success of that thing. But mm. I am not that. I oh, am I not that. that. I am, I got to figure out. Who I am? Well, that's another conversation. That, I mean, hello. But I think one of, one of the things I consider, hmm. right, is because it's such a sensitive, vulnerable space, what do you do when people don't like what you produce? Like, that's a real thing. Like, when you think that you've... I just gave birth to the most beautiful baby ever. <laughs> and and people like, like, oh, you look at that little ugly baby. Look at that little ugly baby you just produced. Right? What, what do you do 
when somebody thinks that your baby is ugly, P- particularly when you're when you're serving them, mm. right? Because ultimately, as creatives, we have clients, right? It's not just what we produce, but it's hey, I'm producing this for you, and you don't like it. What, what, how are we dealing with that? I feel as if I subscribe to a couple different beliefs, right? I feel as if there is no such thing as a bad idea, just the wrong time. Mm -hmm. And so maybe that idea is not for that person. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make the idea bad or that Mm -hmm. doesn't make it, even if you hate it, cool. Somebody else might like it. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. just back shelf it, put it on the back burner for a little while and then retool it to match because at the end of the day, you're there to serve a client. Yeah. You know? Like if you were make, if you're making your own things, it don't matter what anybody has to say. You know, it's your thing. But if if it's for them, it has to fit what they want. You know. Yeah. And yeah. so just back table it. No sensitivity there. Yeah. I mean, there is sensitivity <laughs> for sure. For yeah. sure. I'm, I'm offended. Yeah. I'm offended. Yeah. I'm offended. I am for sure. Let's be clear. Yeah. Let's be clear. Yeah. I'm offended. <laughs> yeah. In my mind, I'm cursing you out, but right. it, but you know, <laughs> but you know right. it's gonna be okay. And then too, what you were saying is so clear because it's like. A lot of times, because creativity comes from the inside, it's hard to detach yourself from it. And so once you get to that point where I'm not who I create, you can change what I create because I know it's not bad. It doesn't change me. So it's just kind of just making sure those two lanes are always separate. And that way you can, you know, you can retool some stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I always take it as a challenge. I mean, Mm -hmm. I completely agree. And I I always take it on as a challenge. And uh, I think that came from me understanding that there is no limit to God. There's no limit to his creativity. And so if I created this and I feel like this is bomb, client don't like it, (laughs) one, I'm going to save it in another place because we're going to use it. I spent a lot of time cropping this, whatever I have to do. Um, But now I get the opportunity to do what I love, create again. Yeah. Um, And so I think... um, Sometimes creatives have this thing like writer's block and mm-hmm. am I going to be able to do it again? Mm-hmm. I, and once you kind of settle with that, it's like, you know what, this is my therapist actually is the one that helped me work through that. Because mm-hmm. she was like, understand that you at your best when you if you just give it your your five percent, mm-hmm. your 10 percent, like you you killing it. I mean, she had to really encourage me to stay. <laughs> but and I don't, you know, I think there's amazing people out there that do what they do. But you got to feel like, you know what? God gave me this gift. Yeah. There is no limit to him. So therefore there's no limit to to my creativity. I can come up with something better. So yeah. I take it as a challenge. I'm not tapped out. Yeah. yeah. I'm not tapped this, out. A friend of mine would say my merchandise is good. Like I I know my mer- like you may not like it, but my merchandise is good. And so mm-hmm. I think there's a um, a value to kind of knowing like who mm-hmm. you are. I think when your work comes from your soul. Um, it is easy to define yourself by what you produce. Um, I think that that is dangerous to define yourself solely by what you produce. What I, what I create is a, it is something that comes out of me, but it is not me. Um, I think in the same way that children come out of us, but they are not us. We, we have ties to it. We honor it. We love it. We respect it. But I recognize that my children are not my identity. Um, I was my own person before they ever were born. And so in the same way, our projects, our art, our songs, those things are pieces of us, but it is not the sum total of who we are. And so because of that, um, when something is not liked by another person, it is well with my soul because you're not coming against me. You just don't like the art. Um, And that's okay. I think that there is a level of um, sensitivity that we cannot approach, um, that we cannot have when we're dealing with um, creativity because it's subjective. And so I think reminding yourself that people have the right to like what they like and dislike what they like, and it doesn't mean that they dislike you, I think that's healthy for us to be able to release that um, and to release them um, and recognize that you don't have to like my stuff, but honor and respect me. Who do you create for? And that's very general and broad, and mm. broad but I want to I hear how you kind of process that. Who do you create for? In what capacity? What do you mean? Take like the audience. You, take it how you take it. He put it out there. Yeah. Oh. Who do you create for? Who, my analytical mind just yeah. went to, like, <laughs> demographic of everything. Um, you can talk about all of it. <laughs> 
whew, the, the preacher in me, I, I create for the, for the glory of God. <laughs> yes. I anticipated Jeez. that one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Next. I create. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want that. We're not talking about that on this one. All um, right. Okay. I have to say, I think I create for myself. I think mm. there is a there is a level of fulfillment that comes That's. from creating. And I used to have this mm. thing like, I'm not going to take my laptop. I'm not going to take my laptop. I'm not going to take my <laughs> laptop. But I realized my laptop became a creative journal for me. Mm. Like when I need to like occupy my mind, when I need mm -hmm. to like cope with something and just sit and think before I respond, mm -hmm. I pull out my laptop and I just start creating. It mm. ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Yeah. And so for me, that creativity I create for me. No, oh, yeah. I love that. And I don't ooh, don't don't do that, y'all. I'm looking at this camera right here. Don't do that, y'all. I create for the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah, a, he's a part of it. Yeah. He's a part but of it. But it's not the I full think, yeah. I think there's a level of fulfillment that comes to me doing what I've been created to do. Right. Uh, Look, right. I see what you did right. there. Right. <laughs> and even seeing it as like I leave little deposits of myself in everything that I do. Mm. You know? And so like yes, I create for myself because I want to look back at it and be proud of it versus look back at it and just like, you know what, this sucks. Because <laughs> then the conversation may be like I suck, you know? Yeah. And so it's just you're right, I have nothing new to add. I make for myself. Yeah. Part of it, I would say. Part yeah. Of it. Mm -hmm. What do you personally? What do you think? What are your? What are your? What are your specific um, outlets of creativity? What do you do and know that you do that thing well? Can't nobody tell me that. <laughs> One thing I, I know, do that well. I know I do very well is I can arrange the heck out some BGVs. Yes, you I can. Know, I can <laughs> arrange. I can arrange the heck out some BGVs, and um, like you said, I take a lot of pleasure in just. Crafting not just the sound but an emotion. Like mm. that's what I really love to put oh, and I to like pull the the emotion yeah. out of the song. Cause I, you know, when you hear a song and just, everybody's just singing, you know, it's just like I've, it's great music. I just don't feel anything. It's one dimensional. It's very one dimensional, yeah. and so I love to bring the emotion of a piece to life. And yeah, so I love that. I love that. Mm. This was so great. I don't know what I do. <laughs> um, we not doing I, for that. me, I'm a big picture creative. Mm. I love to unfrustrate the creative. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, because okay. I can I can identify and I can relate to it. Um, mm. and I like see I like sitting from it. I tell people all the time, quit calling me at the last minute on this stuff. Bring me in when it's like a baby idea. Because I love to mm -hmm. bring this together. Oh, we need to bring this in. We need mm -hmm. to bring Benari in because mm -hmm. your song needs some emotions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's listening. Um, but I love bringing, bringing creatives together to mm. come up with something that has never been done before. And you know, I, Good, I, yeah. I, this is your show. No, no. I, no I, this I, is I, your I, show. No, this is our, <laughs> we all talking. But, <laughs> but I want to add to that because I feel like sometimes we mystify, like, oh, I have to be spontaneous to be creative. But really, yeah. creativity yeah. is birth and structure. It actually like, Oh, I love that. The more order Say you it. have, the more range, the more freedom you have to make on top of that. Versus oh, I love just that. like chaos. And it's like, nah. So I love the the logistical part behind, you know, breaking this down, getting this idea. I love all of that because it gives you more range to be more creative. I mean, even biblically, right? Yeah. Like, like God took chaos literally yes. and called it into order, and that was His creative you platform this, was to call that, it into order. Yeah. So I mean, I think that stirred me. It's creativity. Just pause for right. a second. We run around. Jesus, that was good. Creative yeah. creativity brings things brings things into order, and I think that. Like, I feel like we kind of, we excuse our disorder, mm. you know, and say that this is my creative genius, right? But really, you're your creativity mess. should. Right, you're just, you're just a mess, you're a mess. <laughs> and that's just an excuse, right? Because really, it's designed to, to all funnel into a thing. Like, it should bring, uh, you know, some type of order and structure mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day. The shift of creatives in the church has completely revolutionized the way that we do ministry. I mean, to think about it, the reason why we are able to do this right now is because of creatives, because people have decided that we weren't going to be stuck in the four walls, but that 
there was technology that was available to us that allowed us to reach the masses. And so um, we're super blessed because there are messages that people are receiving right now um, that are only able to be received because of creatives and technology. And that marriage has really allowed us to evangelize. It has allowed us to do exactly what the word said, which is to take this gospel to the four corners of the globe. And the only way for us to do that, because hello, I can't get on a plane and go to the four corners. The way that we do that is by allowing this message to go through the internet, YouTube, all of these different streams, um, and allows us to bring it straight to your home. And so, super blessed by creatives and technology. We're gonna wrap up a little bit, but I, I want you to give some final words to um, some creative that's out there that's a Christian mm -hmm. and struggling because they feel like there are these boundaries, these parameters that they can't, like, is blocking me, is keeping me from being able to um, completely release everything that I have on the inside of me. What would you, what would you say to them? I'll let the prophetess. Ooh, why would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> to the frustrated creative. To the frustrated Christian creative. Christian creative. Mm. Um, I think we just said it. I think the missing key for most people is when they are frustrated, they don't realize it's not you, it's probably your plan. Mm. Um, and most people don't have mm -hmm. that thing. They excuse themselves out of that, what we call administrative behavior <laughs> of bringing order to their lives. Um, and I think once you get some type of order and structure in your life, a structure of how you do things, mm -hmm. Um, and preserve your integrity. Your, when I say integrity, I mean who you really are. Figure out who that is and preserve it. Fight for it at, at every turn. Fight for it for yourself. Mm -hmm. Fight for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. then create some structure and order in your life. And then you'll watch the creativity of God flourish. And um, just me personally, I have a burden for the creative that is looking for outside things to cope as we sit in this mm. restaurant with wine bottles on the side. <laughs> and I'm gonna say it, this is mm -hmm. the part y'all can edit it out if you want to. No, you good. But I was a prophesying, creative, preaching, teaching, alcoholic mm -hmm. for 10 years mm -hmm. no one knew but I used it because I was so frustrated within myself and I couldn't find who I was and I and then at one point I was depending on it to create mm -hmm. um, and so I just want to speak to that creative that is dealing with that mm -hmm. the Bible says um, that he has created us to praise God mm -hmm. um, if you look into that 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 praise that finding God, that, that presence, is the thing that regulates your dopamine. I'm going too far. No, you're fine. You're good. Um, but it's that thing. God has created a space in his presence for you to be able to normalize, to be able to cope. He leads me by the still waters. Yeah. Everywhere in scripture, God is fighting for your soul. Mm -hmm. And I just want to speak to that creative that might be dealing with addiction that might be mm. trying, to trying to suppress certain things in their lives because God has given you so much and your mind mm. thinks at a thousand miles a minute and you're just trying to slow it down. Yeah. And so this little joint kind of helped me yesterday and, and, and this, this, this helped me this day. And it's kind of cool to do it right now in Christian gym because you got all these people, we drink over here and we Christians. I ain't coming at nobody's theology. What I'm saying to you is that there is more for you on the mm. other side of mm. this addiction, that God wants to use what he put in you to satisfy you, to fulfill you. And that's my prayer. That's my desire. And I love I'm that. Done. Love that. Love that. Oh, know. and I'm celebrating two years sober, by the way. Let's no, 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 no,
I don't. I, my words are not as profound. <laughs> <laughs> don't you dare do that. All. At all. But I would say it's important as a young creative, a mature creative, just a creative in general, to get a good grasp on what your why is. Mm, because once you have the why, the what doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. The how doesn't matter. The who doesn't matter. The why is the basis for all of it. Figure out why you create. Figure out what it is inside of you that comes alive as you create. And then after that, any place that you're in, no matter how limiting, no matter how frustrating, no matter how many barriers, if you have the why, you can always make things inside of that. And so that's my thing. Just figure out what your why is. Well, I so figured good. out my why for bringing y'all on here. Hey. So thank y'all for joining me. I appreciate y'all so much. Mm -hmm. um, and come back to New York again so we could talk some more. For sure. We'll do it. Love y'all. Thank you for watching this episode of Talk To Me. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single thing. We'll see you next time.